Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Barak Atham. All right, so today I'm going to deal with the topic, okay, of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. We're not going to labor on this one long, uh, but, you know, it, it's definitely a good study. And as I said before, one of my new growing topics that I like to deal with is uh, the Old Testament only scoffs, okay? So that's what we're going to handle. That's what we're going to look at. All right. So we're looking at the, the book of Malachi, chapter three and verse one. Um, the materials that will be needed for this lesson is your KJV Bible, Strong's Concordance um, and uh, Strong Internet Connection, man, if you got it, because you may need to look some things up. You need, may need to cross reference and follow along with the commentaries. So, yeah, just go ahead and be diligent with this one. But know that you know, these are not things that can be seen just by reading the text. A lot of the times we got to go deeper than the text. Uh, and that's the reason for the text lab. Okay. We got to go into the Hebrew a little bit. So let's get into it. All right. So above at the top, you see the Hebrew at the bottom, you see the English. It says, behold, I'm sending my messenger to clear the way before me and the Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple suddenly. As for the angel of the covenant that you desire, he is already coming. Now, we want to focus on the three things here, all right? You got three different sets of pronouns that you got to focus on, uh, three different nouns, three different people, subjects that are in these verses, or in, in this verse. So as we seek to understand this, we're going to have to break this down a little bit, right? And we're going to come back to the Hebrew, of course. That's what the text lab is for. But let's look at Malachi chapter three and verse one. So the number one person that we have in this verse is my messenger. That's the number one person we have, okay? And we see it here. So it says, behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me, okay? Next person we see is the person who's speaking, right? It says, I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me, right? So this is Yahweh speaking. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. And then, of course, we have, this is really what the video is about. Who is this Lord? This underlined in red right here. Who is this? Because it can't be Yahweh because Yahweh is underlined in green. And there's a different set of pronouns for each person. So we're going to explore this. We're going to figure out what's going on. All right. Y'all hit that uh, share button. Y'all hit that like button. Y'all hit that subscribe button. All right. Also remember to, to like, comment, and subscribe on the Sons of Thunder Israelites North Carolina page. All right. As well as the main channel. So we got Malachi chapter three and verse one. Now, let's look at this real quick. That word right there that I just circled is H1964, which is Hekal, right? Now, a Hekal is a temple, but it's not simply Hekal, all right? Please excuse the vowel marking under the letter He there. It is incorrect. It's supposed to be um, uh, 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 um, two dots instead of a patak, all right? So Salakian. But so this is the word hey call, and it means temple, all right? But when you add that last letter that you see there, that vav with the holum on the top of, it's, it's actually called a holum vav. That's called a pronomial suffix. Anytime you see a word that ends, you know, nine times out of 10, if you see a word that ends with a, uh, a holum vav, you know that it's denoting that it's a possessive pronoun. Okay, that's a pronominal suf uh, suffix, and it goes at the end of the word, and it denotes the pronoun his. Okay, third person, masculine singular. That's what you see here at the bottom. Okay, it says his temple. It says noun, masculine, and then it says third, masculine singular. All right, and that that whole involve is what demonstrates that for us. Okay, now let's take that away. Let's look at the next word, H113, which is ha'adon, all right? 
Now, that word is Adon in the Hebrew. Uh, it's Adawan in the Hebrew as well. So you can say it either way. All right. You have Adon or Adawan. So this word right here is H113. And it just means Lord, husband, master, owner. Okay. That's the word Adawan. That's the person who is in charge of, of whatever we're talking about, right? Um, and we're not going to go too deep into the meaning of that word. But that word is not Yahweh's name. That's what you need to know. That's what you need to know. So you just saw two words in a row that tell you something. It says, the Lord will come to his temple. But it doesn't say Yahweh will come to his temple. It says the Lord, it says the Adawan will come to his temple. And guess who's speaking right now? Yahweh is speaking. So Yahweh is speaking and saying the owner of the temple will come to his temple. Yo, that's heavy. That's heavy. All right. So we're going to go into it. All right. Let's look at what the commentary says. The commentary, uh, I, I should have put the name of this commentary, but I didn't. All right. So Baba Kasha on that. Forgive me. Um, please forgive me. But it says this word Lord occurs eight times with the definite article, but always, except for right here in this verse, it always appears with the name of the most high following. So in Exodus 23 and 17 is followed by Yahweh. In Exodus 34 and 23, it says Yahweh, the God of Israel, right? In Isaiah 124, Isaiah 3 and 1, Isaiah 10, 33, Isaiah 19 and 4 is followed by Yahweh Shavaoth, right? Which we know was the Lord of hosts. And in Isaiah 10 and 16, it's followed, it, it says the Lord of hosts, all right? So everywhere, whenever you see the word, the Lord, right? Ha'adon ha or Ha'adawan. Every time we see that word, it's followed by the Lord's name, except for this verse. Very, very, very interesting, okay? And here, as elsewhere, it must mean God himself is what the commentary says, right? Because they can't, they can't fathom that there's a person somewhere calling themselves the Lord of the temple that's not the most high God. They can't fathom and they can't understand this. So, in their commentary, they wrote it in that it must be the most high himself. All right. And, and we already see how that doesn't make any sense because look, let's pull this back up. It says, behold, I will send my messenger. Jump down to the bottom. Say if the Lord of hosts. So guess what? Yahweh Shabbat is speaking. The Lord of hosts is speaking. So when he comes around and says, and the Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple, that's third person. That's not him. He's not saying, I will come, but I'm going to come in a different form. No, he said, the Lord who you seek will come. Right? Let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. So this is off of safaria.com. These are some commentaries uh, by a man named Rashi. You can Google him, look him up. He's a Bible commentator, and I believe he's also a grammarian, all right, um, of the Hebrew scripts and things like that. So he's, you know, he's well studied in the Hebrew. But let's look at it. It says, Rashi, behold, I will send my angel. And he says that that means to put away the wicked. Um, but let's jump down to the third section. It says, the Lord whom you seek. So, Salakia. So, the Lord whom you seek, he says that's equal to the God of justice. So, he puts the most high as the Lord whom you seek. All right. But we already saw how that's problematic because that's a third person masculine singular now. It's not the type of thing that is really up for debate is third person. Why would the Lord be speaking of his own self in third person? That don't even make sense. All right. So let's keep rolling. The JPS Tanakh commentary says this. Apparently the messenger of the previous sentence is regarded as Israel's tutelary angel. 
all right? Um, meaning the angel that guides them into truth and, 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 and brings them into the understanding of wisdom, all right? So that's not totally off from what we believe. Let's keep rolling. Another commentary. He who has spoken of himself in the first person. Now, now check this out. This is a Christian commentary right here. And, and look at what he's going to say. He who has spoken of himself in the first person by saying, I will sin, now speaks of himself in the third person. So you mean to tell me in one verse, the Lord spoke of his, the Lord who is already speaking in the first person is also going to speak in the third person about himself? That don't make no sense. That's almost like me saying, I'm about to run to the store. And when Jonathan got there, he grabbed some berries. That don't make no sense. Nobody speaks like that. If you're going to speak in the third person, then you speak in the third person the entire time. If you're going to speak in the first person, you speak in the first person the entire time. Nobody starts off in the first person and then ends up in the third person. That don't make sense. So they're trying to make this fit their Trinity doctrine, but they got to do some reaching, some obvious reaching to make it happen. All right. Um, and then another commentary, right? This is the Benson commentary. And he kind of goes into what we believe, right? Of course, he goes off a little bit, but mainly what he's saying is, is that the messenger who we see in this verse is John the Baptist. And we're going to demonstrate that. And Christ told you that John the Baptist was paving the way for him. Let's look at it. So first, we know that Isaiah chapter 40 is the reference here, okay? We got to understand the reference to understand what Malachi is saying because Malachi is referencing Isaiah 40, all right? Chronologically, Malachi would have been written after Isaiah, okay? So let's keep rolling. It says, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, say, if your God speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished and her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins, right? So your punishment has been completed. Well, guess what? If your punishment was completed, we know that Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28 had to come true in order for your punishment to be completed. And a part of Deuteronomy 28 is you was kicked out your land, which is exactly what happened to Israel. It was kicked out of their land, right? So your warfare is accomplished. Your iniquity is pardoned. This is a part of the promises and the covenants and the adoption, right? Which is why Paul says in Romans chapter nine, chapter uh, and verse four, who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory and the covenants, right? And the giving of the law and the services of God and the promises, everything belongs to the Israelites. So it's crystal clear that we speak into Israel. We're not speaking to the whole world right here. We're speaking to Israel. Okay, let's keep going. Now, the context of Malachi chapter three matches the context of Isaiah chapter 40. That's another big thing we got to look at. Isaiah is speaking to people who are one day going to be able to come back from their captivity. Because why? Because the Lord said your iniquity has been pardoned. And he also said, you've received double for all your sins. Your warfare is accomplished. So if you're, if all of these things have been accomplished, that means that you're in the land of your captivity, but it's accomplished now. You can come back. And we know that that's what happened in the Bible. So the period of time when they come back has to be the second temple period, because when they left the first time, the, the first temple was destroyed. Okay, we got to get into a little bit of history to kind of make this make sense. And just follow along. Right? So it's after the captivity and exile. And now it's time to restore the righteousness in the land. So... Isaiah chapter 40 is setting the tone for verse three. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. You see that? That's where Malachi gets it from. But look at the context in which it comes. It comes in the second temple period. It comes after the captivity. And it comes at a time when it's time to restore the righteousness in the land. OK, this is all in connection with the promises, the covenants and the adoption. 
So we got to keep all these things in mind, man. This is this is how you truly are going to break down the Bible properly. You got to know the context. You got to know who they're speaking to. You got to know what time period we're in, okay? Let's look at Malachi chapter three and verse one. And this is the last slide. But it says, behold, I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. We remember the pronouns that we have. So we clearly have three people here in this verse that we're speaking of, all right? Let's find out who the first person is. Let's go to Malachi chapter four and verse five. Because we, we need to understand who this messenger is that's going to prepare the way before Yahweh. So Malachi chapter four and verse five reads, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So the Lord promised that Elijah the prophet would come before the dreadful day of the Lord. And what's the Lord say in this verse in Malachi 3 and 1? Behold, I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. So these verses are parallel. Let's jump into Matthew chapter 11 and verse 11 to see what Hamashiach Yahushua had to say about this. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there is not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence taketh it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied unto John. And if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. So Hamashiach, Yahweh is breaking this down and letting you know, guess what? Not only was Elijah a great prophet, but he was regenerated as John the Baptist. Not only was he regenerated as John the Baptist, but he was the greatest prophet to ever live. So it's so fitting that Malachi says, I will send my messenger, right? The Lord calls him my messenger. Direct, it's a direct connection of the relationship he has with this person, right? My messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. You gotta be the greatest prophet of all time to prepare the way before Yahweh himself right but there's more it says and the lord who you seek will suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant let's jump into deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18 to understand this so when it says the messenger of the covenant moses gave you the covenant moses wrote the book of deuteronomy and wrote moses wrote this passage and this is the Lord speaking to Moses and saying, listen, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I command them. In order for you to be like Moses, you have to be a messenger of the covenant because Moses was a messenger of the covenant. So when the Lord says that you will be like Moses, you have to be the messenger of the covenant. Well, this verse also says that the same person who's the messenger of the covenant is greater than the temple. And this is crazy, man. He's the owner of the temple, the Adawan of the temple, right? And it's called his temple. It's not speaking of Yahweh's temple. It's speaking of whoever this Adawan is in the verse. All right. So what did we learn here? We learned that there's two lords in this passage. You got the Lord, Yahweh, which is underlined in green. And then you got the Lord or Adawan, right? Which is not Yahweh, where what uh, Malachi chapter three and verse one calls his temple. The temple belongs to this person. All right. And then you also have a messenger. OK, who we've already discovered is John the Baptist. So I need you guys to really to really hone in on this and understand what's going on. All right. The Lord is drawing a separation here. He's saying, I am Yahweh, your power and none other. You shall worship none other than me. But at the same time, there's a person in Malachi chapter three and verse one who is not Yahweh, 
who is the owner or the Adawan of the temple. He is a messenger of the covenant and you will seek him and you will delight in him. And behold, he shall come. So guess what? You're still waiting on somebody. You are still waiting on somebody. This is heavy. Nobody, no, hey, the Old Testament only will teach you that, um, the Old Testament only will teach you that Elijah is the messenger that will prepare the way before the Lord. Elijah to come, has to come before the great and coming dreadful day of the Lord. They, they believe this. But then when you ask them, is Elijah greater than the temple? Is he the owner of the temple? Does the temple belong to Elijah? They have to say no. They have to say no. So now they caught. They caught in a, in a, in a trick bag right here. All right. And to make it even more crazy, this person had to come in the second temple period. Because if you understand the historicity of the book of Malachi, you know that the book of Malachi, this verse right here is prophesying of the te second temple period. The Lord who you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Who is the Lord that owns the temple, the Adawan, who owns the temple and is also a messenger of the covenant that came in the second temple period? Come on, y'all. All right. So listen, that's what we got. That's the text lab for this week. Uh, like I said, go back through the notes. Look at Malachi chapter three and verse one. Look at the commentaries. Follow along at what we're looking at and understand that there's no way around it, man. Hamashiach Yahawashah must be dealt with. The scriptures all point to him. All right? So we're going to say Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. We appreciate y'all for listening and sharing in this lesson with us. Y'all be blessed. Shalom.